Uninterrupted Media presents LSU Odyssey Podcast. Presented by American Spirit Tobacco Products. Crosby, Stills, and Nash and Young box set collector, collector's editions. And Alfie on Blu-ray. How's it going, everybody? Hi, uh, what's up, everybody? We're going to be giving out nine copies of the DVD Blu-ray to Alfie. Yep. We're going to be giving up... Uh, Nine copies of Alfie on uh, Blu-ray. The the legendary performance from Jude Law. From Jude Law. I don't know if everybody knows who Jude Law is, but Jude Law was a great actor whose name was Jude Law. But Jude Law, um, you know, moving on from Jude Law... Uh, we are here, and it is SEC week, baby. It is SEC week, and LSU are headed to Starkville. With revenge on our minds. Isn't it? Is revenge on the mind? Is revenge on the mind? I think it is. Because you know what? That team... Put 600 passing yards on us. That team scored 44 points in Death Valley. None of that should have happened. None of that was acceptable. I don't even know how many big gains of 15 plus, 20 plus yards they had in that game, but it was a joke. It was, it was, it was violent for us to watch. It was violence against the LSU community. It was violence against the fan base to watch that game. And I, even though it has no bearing on what what is to come, I rewatched that game. Yep, I did it. I did it. Basically like uh, taking a nail gun sitting on the toilet sealing this nail gun into the base of the toilet and then sitting down and squeezing the trigger just why am I doing this to myself oh god oh god it's the third quarter do I have to do this more oh missed field goals oh interceptions oh another 40 or 5 yard gain like it is like just punishing yourself. And I did it. And you know what I gleamed from that? You know what I gleamed the most? LSU might be heading into this Mississippi State rematch doing the same damn thing. And they can scheme around whatever. They can they can have as many exotic zones and and uh, do away with just pure man coverage as much as they want. They can have, you know, whoever they want out there. But as long as... I hate to put this on one guy. But I'm going to. As long as Damone Clark is out there, playing middle linebacker, LSU are extremely, extremely susceptible to the over the middle pass. And if there's one coordinator who knows how to absolutely make number 18 pay for his lack of pace, his lack of coverage ability, it is Mike Leach because he did it last year. And then every coordinator copied exactly what he did. 
And you know what's changed? Not much, because we did it again against UCLA. And Damone Clark is still starting middle linebacker for the LSU Tigers. Now, I understand we're going to be moving away from the 4-3, so it's going to be more of a 4-2-5. I understand all that, but what you will have in most base formations is Damone in the middle. Now, if I'm Will Rogers, the quarterback from Mississippi State, who threw for, I think it was like 479 or something one game, 370 another, uh, eight touchdowns to one pick. I think he already has over 1,000 yards passing. I think his lowest was 294 this season. But Will Rogers, he is, he's got an arm. And this team is a heavy one-dimensional passing team. Damone Clark will do just fine against their running game. I mean, one of their games, I believe it was against either Louisiana Tech or I can't remember the other smaller school they played, but they had, like, their leading rusher was 18 yards. I'm not making that up. They had a leading rusher of 18 yards. Okay, and then when they had the most yards they had in a game, was 71 from, I believe it was Justin or Joshua Marks. Not too sure on his first name, but his last name is Marks. And this guy had two touchdowns, 71 yards in that game to to lead the way for, for Mississippi State. But this same running back had two fumbles in another game. So, you know, and then I think it was 49 yards rushing in one game to lead the way. So that's the thing you got. 18, 49, and 71. You have a team that cannot run the football. And, you know, you look at the Memphis game that Mississippi State lost. They threw the ball 67 times. 67 attempts. LSU will love if he puts up 67 attempts again. But here's the thing we will not love. If he puts 67 attempts again and throws for over 500 yards against us, 400 yards, 300 yards, we can't allow it to happen. How many times can we allow that to happen? How many times? How many times can LSU just say, hey, completely just kill us over the middle? Hey, just come uh, just come get 400 yards on us. Why not? This will, this, will, this won't hurt us at all. You know, I feel like we're putting in a really... We're putting in a guy that doesn't fit the scheme, fit the system to stop the pass over the middle. Is this what we've been saving Mike Jones Jr. for? Is this the game Mike Jones Jr. comes out and announces himself? You know... One Tiger we didn't hear too much about or from throughout the season, but also last week against Central Michigan, was Cordell Flott. You know, Cordell Flott was a big worry for me coming into the year because I wondered where he was mentally. He allowed 11 touchdowns directly last year, just himself. He was picked on mercilessly at the nickel position usually by tight ends and players he should have never been covered covering in the first place. But he was the fastest guy to cover him. And yet he was completely lost. Coming into this season, I didn't know what we'd see from Cordell Flott. In limited targets, we've seen him bat a few passes down. We've seen him grab a tackle and a half for a tackle loss in a I think it was the first two games he had a tackle for loss and made some great plays in the backfield, made some big, just venomous hits that are going to give him a lot of confidence. But this is a game where we're going to find out how well he has recovered because Mississippi State was a game where he was ruthlessly exposed. And it was the first game in his LSU career where he really didn't look like he belonged on the field. As a freshman, he came in and was dominant against Alabama in some reps. You know, played a few against Texas, was in there in the SEC title game, was in there in pretty much every big game for LSU. 
CFP title game, game against Oklahoma in the semis. He was in there. But against Mississippi State, he had his pants pulled down. No other way to put it. Is this where Cordell Flott kind of says, hey, the buck stops here. This is where the streak stops. I feel like Cordell Flott is a big X factor in this game. I feel like all of our nickels are. I feel like this is a game where we match up our nickels play to play. Cam Lewis, he needs to be utilized at the nickel position for some of those bigger guys. He can guard them. He can cover them. He has the speed to track them. He has the size to handle them. Does he have the ball skills once the ball is in the air? You know, he had a great uh, pass deflection against Tua with his back completely to the ball, forcing a, a fourth down, I believe it was, in the 2019 legendary LSU-Alabama game. Had a nice uh, pass deflection in the red zone. But then, on the next play, fourth down, they went right at Cam Lewis again. He was covering this dude all over this dude. I believe it was even uh, Devontae Smith. And he barely makes the catch over Cam Lewis as Cam Lewis is smashing him into the corner of the end zone. So Lewis was pretty much all over it. But, you know, once again, he's a, he was a strong safety at that time, hadn't polished his nickel skills, and still he showed some pretty good ability in that position. So what I want to see, and I mean, before the UCLA game, I even asked Jacob Hester this, LSU legend Jacob Hester. I asked LSU legend Jacob Hester, do you think we will see Cam Lewis cover Greg Dolchich? I asked him that the night ahead of the UCLA game. And he said, yeah, I think we'll see 31 guard, guard Dolchich. We didn't see that at all. And LSU suffered horribly because of that. Now, will we see Cam Lewis guard those bigger tight ends? I think we will. I think we're going to see a lot of these nickel guys take their spots. I think um, you know Will Rogers. He can put up the he can put up the passing yards. He can put up the touchdowns. <clears throat> they have a receiver Polk who had a 11 catch, 135 yard day, um, a few touchdowns. I believe it was against Memphis. So they've got receivers, but they don't have anybody consistent. So. If LSU can stop those underneath, over-the-middle gimme things, they can really do something here. This is a favorable matchup for this defense. This is favorable for, for the LSU defense. You know why? You really want to know why? The biggest reason? Because Mississippi State are one-dimensional. Mississippi State are a one-dimensional offense. If we can't compete with them, we can't compete with anybody. Okay? If we can't stop their running attack, if, if, if we, their attack, if we can't stop Will Rogers passing the football, if we can't learn from the same mistakes we made last year, if this happens again, I'm talking LSU still win by 20 points, but Will Rogers is found to put up 400-plus passing yards on us, and we have a just horrible day defensively, then I'm not too sure what the hell we're doing on defense. We have the athletes. We have the guys to, to totally shut that down. This is... A, this is this is as good of a matchup for LSU as you would want. I understand there's the, the worry about the air raid. That shouldn't be a worry. It should have never been a worry with the Bo Pelini defense, and it should definitely not be a worry with the Durante Jones defense. 
We're going to be going through a lot more of this game coming up here. I know I've thrown some stats and some things your way, but we are just barely lifting the lid off of this game. The SEC weekend is here. It is back. I mean, it's all leading up to that, that night game against Auburn, but we have business to take care of early in the morning against Starkville first. LSU haven't done too well with early morning kickoffs. Missouri comes to mind. Although, you know, Missouri was supposed to be a home game. Things really got switched and messed up. COVID year, but no excuses. So, please, if uh, you're um, wanting to check out some LSU stuff, definitely go to lsuodyssey.com. We've got tons of stuff right now. Andre Anthony's legacy, his career, we check into that, we pay tribute, we've got the five best performances of the Central Michigan game, and we're going to be just locking and loading it with way more. Join us, baby. Go Tigers!